Hey everyone, it's another Monday, which which means it's time for another video demo of Cortex. Uh, this week, uh, Cortex 1.2 is available. Um, there will be links to download that in the video description, and again, links on everything that I'm talking about uh, in this video. Uh, but in this video, I wanted to do uh, something a little bit different from previous week's videos, deviating from the just what I did over the last week. A um, couple of reasons for that, actually three. Uh, the first one is that I don't think I've really done a video from the perspective of a, a user journey uh, using Cortex um, for its intended purpose. All the videos have been pretty feature oriented. So I wanna do that today. Uh, the second reason is that with a new release, I, I wanted to kind of talk holistically about the entire thing. It's been a while since I did a video uh, showing everything that is in Cortex. And then th the third reason is that this week has been a little bit less feature oriented and more uh, kind of getting access to Cortex as I'm gearing up to, to make it as easy as possible for you all to uh, get access to Cortex and run it on your own uh, systems and uh, run it on your own data, be able to see it working on, on your your share wall data. Um, I've been cleaning up the process a little bit and I want to show some of that today. So with that, let's switch over to demo mode. And uh, first off, two things you should do right off the bat. Uh, First, you should contact Avanti if you're hosted and get a copy of your data. Can't stress that enough. None of this works if you don't have your data. You are absolutely entitled to your data. Uh, it's written into your contracts. The data is yours. You absolutely should get a copy of your data. I'd say get one now so you can start playing with it and, you know, of course, playing with Cortex. Um, and uh plan to get a copy of your data you know the day before your license ex expires or the day before you move off of sharewell onto whatever you move to be it neurons or easy vista halo service nap wh whatever uh, make sure that you make a plan to get your data in the latest version once you're actually ready to move off of sharewell so that you have the most up-to-date version of data so all of that plays into, you know, backups and, and data governance and that sort of thing. You probably don't need me to tell you about that, but I can't stress enough. Get your data. Make sure you have your data. So that's thing number one. And then thing number two is go to the documentation site for Cortex. Everything you need to know about Cortex is on this documentation site. And if it's not there, there's contact information. There's links to my YouTube channel, which... You obviously know you're watching a video on my YouTube channel. But that's where we're going to start our tour today is the documentation site. So if you go to get started, uh, a couple of videos ago, I talked about how I reorganized this. We're just going to dive right in to install on your own systems. Of course, you can check out on the demo site, which is actually where I'm going to demo it in just a minute. But we're going to jump to install on your own systems install I in IIS, that's probably how you're going to be setting this up. Now, there are a bunch of steps here. Um, a couple of reasons for that, uh, but I know it, it seems daunting. If you want help uh, getting walked through these steps, let me know. Happy to help you. I also have a video specifically about, actually a couple of videos specifically about uh, installing this in IIS. And I'll probably make a couple more as well. Uh, so if you want links to those, hit me up, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll get you all the information that you need in order to understand how to install this in IIS. Um, but the key part is downloading the right version of Cortex. Uh, and the way to download that is to go off to our brand new releases page. Um, there are a couple things that this brand new releases page uh, offers. One, the end user license agreement is front and center. Um, so there's no question about what you can and can't do with the software. Um, and 
that will continue to get cleaned up as as the uh, use cases uh, and the kind of the the user journey of installing the software uh, gets figured out. It also requires a username and password. Um, this is a couple of reasons. The main one is just to make sure that you all have access to it and people who really shouldn't have access to it. Um, you know, like, you know, bad actors, you know, there are some bad people on the internet. We want to make sure that they don't have access to Cortex doing weird things with it. Um, so this is where you go. Uh, this is also linked from the documentation site, uh, but it's releases.colony.com. There's a link to register. Uh, it, it actually says request access to downloads. Same thing. You create a user account. I'll get notified. I'll, I'll give you access to it. Uh, and then you go to Cortex 1.2, and there you go. There's Cortex 1.2. You download the version that's appropriate for you. Uh, in the case of running in an IIS, that's probably this Win X64 one. Um, that's nice, self-contained. If you already have .NET 7 uh, running on the on the server you're installing on, you can go for the the .NET 7 one. And that's fine too. If you're running on Linux, go for the Linux one. I think that goes without saying. Uh, but most people are probably going to want one of the Windows-specific ones. All right. So enough about installation. Again, if you want more details on that, send me an email. Schedule time with me. Links in the video description. Let's talk about what you can do with Cortex. When you go to the homepage in Cortex, you get presented with just kind of a search screen. Now let's go from the perspective of, I'm looking for a particular incident. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is, but I, I know it's it's not closed. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was an incident uh, that we're kind of in the middle of working and it has something to do with printer. So I'm gonna type printer and I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna say the field status is not equal to a specific value closed. And let's search. All right, so we've got four incidents that have to do with printers that aren't closed. And it turns out that this is the one, let me, let me zoom out a little bit. Having trouble with, yeah, that sounds right. Let's, let's go into that one and I'll zoom back in. And now I have that incident, having trouble with the printer, having trouble with the network printer. Yeah, that sounds like the, the right one. I have the entire BizOp form. I have the specifics. I have a bunch of related information. Let's say I'm specifically interested in journals. There, you know, there's a specific conversation that I'm, I'm interested in. Uh, recording someone's asking questions about it for you know audit purposes um, so I need all the journals from this from this ticket well I can just click export CSV and boom it's downloaded now I have all the journals from this this particular incident cool that's awesome um, that's basically it in a nutshell obviously you can browse uh, by all major objects in, in the system or supporting objects or lookup tables. Um, so if you really wanted to see every incident in the system, you could do that too. You know, if you really don't remember, you can just go by uh, page and look through the descriptions and see see which one is, is relevant. Uh, most of you all have thousands upon thousands of incidents, so that's, that's going to be prohibitive. Um, but you know, there's nothing stopping you from going by like customer, right? So again, that's Cortex in a nutshell. Uh, other resources, obviously there's this YouTube channel, there's the documentation site, there's links to talk to me, email me, set up some time on my calendar down in the video description. You can of course comment on the video. Uh, I've, I've gotten some comments, questions, and I, I try to respond to as many, if not all of them, as, as I can. Um, and I, I'd love to help you out getting 
getting uh, all this set up on your on your specific shareable data. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, let me know. Uh, anything you'd like to see, future requests, that sort of thing. Um, stay tuned. Um, one dot two is not the final version of Cortex. Um, there is a bright future ahead of Cortex. I've talked about that in in past videos. Um, there will probably be a one dot three with some enhancements, you know, coming from you all. Um, bug fixes. I don't know that there are any bugs, but I'm sure there are bugs. It's software. Of course there are bugs. Um, a couple rough ends. So there will probably be a 1.3 and a 1.4 over the course of the next few months. So stay tuned for, for that. Um, and of course there's, there's a future beyond using Cortex just as an archival tool. Um, however, there's absolutely no time like the present to get set up with Cortex to start making sure that uh, your data shows up properly in Cortex. I've been testing this extensively with the data that I have available to me, which realistically is mostly just the Sharewell demo databases. Um, but the Sharewell demo databases do exercise a lot of a lot of functionality. So I'm pretty confident that it will work on anyone's Sharewell data. Um, but if you find a specific use case that, you know, it doesn't look quite right on, or it's not working exactly the way uh, you expect it to, um, which is basically, does it, does it look like the biz up form? Does it show the data that it's supposed to be showing? Um, if it's not doing that, submit a bug, I'll fix it up. Um, again, no time like the present to get set up with this on your shareable data uh, so that you're, you know, one step ahead uh, in your transition plan. And then you could focus on figuring out which, which system you're going to go uh, to for your day-to-day -day operations and you don't have to worry about the, the archival piece anymore. So long way of saying, let me know if you want to try this out. Uh, we can talk. Uh, I've got pricing and uh, packaging all figured out. Uh, so we can talk uh, in, a, in an individual uh, conversation about that. And uh, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the interest. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of blown away by the amount of interest I've been getting on this. Uh, but keep it coming. You know, don't don't be shy. Uh, it, I keep doing this because you all need it and are interested in it and uh, are excited about it. So keep that coming. Uh, let's let's keep growing that and and let's you know let's see where we can take this. Uh, thanks again. I'll see you next week.